Hey, what is going on everyone? I'm Wicked and welcome to the first part of the first tutorial from inside this brand new block from Hero to Wizard tutorial series. Since this is the first tutorial, I want you to watch, observe and understand how we're going to tackle up each and every project from now on. So, in order to do that, we'll start with a really simple project with something I wanted to develop ever since I understood how many amazing things can be done within Flutter. So let me talk about the motivation on which I'm going to develop this first project. We can all agree that there is a huge discrepancy between what can be done inside Flutter and what Flutter is advertising as their default counter app starting project. In this area of software development, first impression matters the most. So why wouldn't Flutter give their best to showcase what amazing things can be done within their framework? Don't get me wrong. I love how structured material design is, but basic material design like the one presented in the default counter app can be achieved using native Android too. What I want to see as a new Flutter developer is what are the advantages it brings over the stock native Android experience. Therefore, let me tell you what I have in mind. Why wouldn't we completely redesign the default starting project of Flutter so that newcomers can actually have a taste of the many amazing things that can be done inside it. Of course, tradition matters, everyone already knows the famous Flutter counter app, so I am going to implement the same counter idea, but this time with a really different and a much beautiful UI and user experience. So the first step of developing an app is to actually imagine how you want it to look like. I'm not a designer on a daily basis, so the best way to look for inspiration is to start searching for some possible ideas on how I can improve the existing counter user interface. Soon enough, I found this amazing slider, which kind of has the functionality I want, and even more than that, it looks absolutely amazing. So thumbs up to Ranish for developing this package on Flutter, and a big shout out to Oleg Frolov for posting this design on Dribbble. Dribbble is an amazing website where you can go and search for app designs and that's what we're going to use to get inspiration for future apps. Now it's time to integrate what we found so far into the sketch of our app. As you can see, I like designing a preliminary look of my app with a pen and a piece of paper. Here's what I want to achieve. First of all, we should know that this application will contain only one screen, the counter screen. On this screen, I would like this counter slider to be placed somewhere at the bottom, making it easily accessible to the user's thumb. The rock star of this counter app is, as expected, the counter itself, so we must find a way to make its value stand out. What I'm thinking is actually moving the counter value from the slider button to somewhere here at the top of the screen. The value might be also placed above an animated widget to stand out even more and whenever the counter increments, its value may animate differently compared to when it decrements to let the user visually know what happened. The whole idea of a good UI and UX is not to let the user overthink of how the app is going to behave. Everything has to come in naturally. For example, when the counter value increments, the text widget may slide up, whereas when it decrements, it may slide down. Since we move the counter value to the top, I should probably place an icon on the slider button to integrate it in the context of a counter. Another important feature I really want is for the redesigned counter app to be able to react appropriately to whenever the user switches from day to night mode on their phone, so we need to create two separate themes a light team and a dark team. Then we'll need to find a way to link them to the system team. I would imagine the light team as a wintry one, bright, predominantly white with subtle bluish and grayish accents. Speaking about choosing colors, I know for most developers that are not into designing that this preliminary step of building a team may seem pretty difficult and demoralizing. The website I frequently use to get coloring inspiration is Colorinspo. Here you can find multiple colors that go well one with another. A piece of advice I can give you is to do some trial and error at first. See which colors fit best with the sketch you designed earlier. So, for example, I said I want the light theme to be a wintry one. So why not we look into the white colors from this list and try some of them as a background of our app. Another particular theme feature I think would look cool is for our redesigned counter app to have some moving white particles on the background to bring even more life into the scene. 
In comparison to the light theme, I don't want the dark one to be completely black, but rather a darker grey, accompanied by darker blues and greyish accents. Also, the particles moving on the background should be of a dark shaded blue color. The status and navigation bar, if any, should be the same color as the background, so that they integrate nicely with the current theme of the app. Now that we have roughly established how the design will look within our project, it's time to think how we are going to implement the functionality of the app. What I frequently do at this step is think about what are the main features my app will benefit from. Mainly, what are the parts of my application that will dynamically change as a response to an interaction with it. In our case, we have two parts meeting this condition. The counter value changes whenever the user slides right or left and the theme of the app changes accordingly to the system theme picked by the user. In order to implement these two features, we'll probably need two simple qubits, a counter qubit and a theme qubit. So the next step after we establish the qubits will be to imagine what functions and states these qubits will work with. Whenever the user slides left, the counter will decrement. And whenever the user slides right, the counter will increment. Having this in mind, the counter qubit will contain two functions, named increment and decrement, which, as their name is implying, will either increment or decrement the current counter value. Each time a new counter value is calculated, the counter qubit will emit a new counter state containing that counter value throughout its stream of outgoing states. The widget containing the counter value from inside our UI will listen to this stream of states and rebuild accordingly. We also want to persist the counter value to the storage, so that we won't lose its value whenever the application will be restarted. We'll use hydrated block for that. Now, regarding the theme qubit, it will contain a single function called check theme mode, which will check whether the current system theme is set to light or dark. But this is not all we want. We have to somehow listen to whenever the system theme changes, even when the application is running so that the theme of the app will change in real time accordingly and not only once at app startup. For that, we may need to use some observers to the platform brightness. Apart from this, we'll probably use some pop.dev packages to cope with the animations and responsiveness of our app. We'll see those in the second part of this tutorial, when we'll start converting the sketch of our application into beautiful user interface and user experience using real Flutter code. Until then, I hope you really appreciated this introduction on redesigning the default Flutter counter app. Until next time, Make sure you drop a like, subscribe to my channel and share the content with all your colleagues in search of Flutter top tier development. Thank you for watching, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Wicked is out, bye bye.